trial level and high school level. And then Sandra Hayes is going to talk about the integration of technology and also a little bit about our CAPE programs. So I'm going to begin by talking about our visioning process, and I'm going to do that very briefly, but it really lays the groundwork for what we've done in the district over the last three years. In the fall of 09, our trustees decided to re-examine the district's vision and mission and goals. And it was a long process, and they went through a lot of discussion, a lot of debate. They involved uh, community people and, and district people. And at the end of that process, the consensus was an emphasis in our mission to prepare students to be successful in their global future. So that when our kids leave Richardson ISD, they can be successful not only in this state and in this nation, but anywhere they choose to go in the world. And in addition to the mission statement, we had four very specific goals. They targeted student engagement, our curriculum, our staff, and our operations. And our goals that were aligned around student engagement and curriculum really were instrumental in the initiatives that have been in place over the last three years. And I'll speak first to the elementary level. At the elementary level, we have implemented school-wide enrichment clusters at each one of our fourth one elementary. And what we've taken is some of the curriculum that's traditionally been used in the gifted classroom. And this curriculum comes from Dr. Mazzula. He is a renowned expert in the area of gifted education. And we've incorporated activities that are based on student interest. They promote creativity and problem solving, communication and collaboration. And this year we've added an extra emphasis on career awareness within our original clusters. Extremely successful. At the secondary level, we have brought in partnered with the Buck Institute to bring in project-based learning at the secondary level at both our junior highs and high schools. And then district-wide, we have focused on differentiated instruction in the classroom so that we are tailoring our activities and our, our learning strategies for students, which are geared toward their particular ability and achievement level and that are really geared to promote success for each one of our students in the classroom. And in district-wide, we are also focusing on integrating technology into all of our lessons and activities. So Sam is going to talk more about that, but some major initiatives that have been in place for three years now. And let me move away from initiatives and talk a little bit about our curriculum, because this is another area in which we've devoted a lot of time and energy. When the state implemented the new assessment system, they also rewrote state standards. And in looking at our curriculum and evaluating our curriculum, we've aligned it not only to the new state standards, but we've been very strategic in aligning our curriculum to AP and to ACT and to SAT. We've incorporated critical thinking. We've incorporated technology into our curriculum. And we're implementing that district-wide. Another thing that we did over the last three years, we partnered with the college board, and we asked for a team to come in and evaluate our AP program to give us very specific recommendations on increasing both our participation rate as well as our performance rate. And we're in the process of implementing those recommendations right now. Some other things that we have done in our district. This year, for the first time, all four of our high schools have career and college readiness centers. We've had one in place at Lake Collins for quite some time. We piloted a program last year at Berkner, and this year we rolled out at each one of our campuses. So we have Counselors whose sole focus is to promote career and college readiness with our students. We've also added uh, college transition courses at each one of our high schools. They're geared to prep for SAT and ACT and career and college readiness. They have kids with applications to colleges, applications for scholarship funds, learning strategies, note-taking, time management, a lot of activities that are geared to help our kids be successful when they enter the college level. And in addition to that, something I'm very proud of today, and I want to introduce Shars before she leaves, we have added district-wide particular positions, one for the secondary and one for the elementary, with the sole focus being career and college readiness. And Shars Hunt, if you'll please stand, she's managing that program for us at the elementary level. And we can tell you just a little bit about some of the activities she's been involved in this year. At the junior high level, we have trained all of our sixth grade teachers for career and college readiness activities. We've taken all of our sixth graders to their feeder high school this year so that they've had an opportunity to hear about all of our CAPE programs, meet our secondary students, learn what the expectations are at high school. We've implemented career awareness surveys at the junior high level, and we have also added six-year academic plans at the junior high level. 
And then at the elementary level, a huge focus on building the college culture across our elementaries. We know that that dream starts young. And as we continue to transition through time, we are serving many, many, many families whose children will go to college for the first time, first generation college attenders. So we know that that focus and that culture is extremely important. So when you walk the halls of our elementary, you will see signs and banners of colleges. You may see a poster on a teacher's door of where he or she attended college. You'll see career days. You will see enrichment clusters that are geared to colleges and careers. We're really pushing to build that dream early on. So a lot of activities, a lot of strategies. Very proud of the work that's been done. Very proud of the Charis and Melbourne at the secondary level. And uh, at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Sandra. I think we have uh, about 20 minutes to share with her. She's going to talk about technology and Kate, which is career and technology education. Two to four years, depending on what age group they 
are in our high school, starting out as ninth graders or ending up as seniors. So these are the top ten for us. Information technology, healthcare professionals, healthcare management and support staff, engineers, industrial skills, life sciences and biotech, salespeople, accounting and finance, discount retailers, which I love, and uh, private equity firms. So of those ten, RISD has programs available and courses available in all ten of those areas. So we feel good in RISD that we are helping our students to develop those skills that they are interested in. And that's kind of part of what CTE is all about. We offer a variety of options because we want our kids to find what they're passionate about. And if we offer it in high school, that gives them an opportunity to either build those skills early and leave us with a license or certificate in that area, or try out something and go, oh, that's really not for me. I think I'll try something else. And it doesn't cost the parents anything. I like sending them off to a trade school or a, a specialty school where they may have to pay. So um, we try to do that in RSD, and we continue to build those programs. And one of the things our school board allowed us to do was build new facilities for some of our programs in 2006. And so those programs have now come to fruition where we have seniors that are graduating in those programs for the first time. And we're able to offer some of those industry level licenses and certificates in those new areas. A couple of other things I wanted to touch on today are some of the real world connections that we make in RISD. Um, we're always looking for opportunities for our students to make those connections outside of what we call the brick and mortar classroom. So we're always looking for virtual opportunities. We had one um, last year with some high school students that were able to connect with other high schools across the country to look at a green project, how they can make their communities um, green for them and what that looks like. And so Cisco helped us to do that. And we also have a program called Curriculum Flipping in our classrooms. And so we are offering opportunities for our students, particularly in our higher level math classes, our pre-cal classes, and our BC calculus classes. Students are able to do all of their curriculum through videos that the teachers post each day. So they're able to do that video piece at home on their own time. They can fast forward, rewind, go through it as many times as they need to, and then come back into the classroom and do those skills Again, that Dr. Wagner and Melinda talked about that collaboration and working together to make sure they understand that material and move forward with it. So we see that curriculum flipping happening at all of our high schools. And then with Charis's help, we've also expanded that to some of our elementary schools. Um, at one of our schools, our math science technology magnet, um, we have uh, curriculum flipping happening in our K-6 classrooms. One teacher at every level has opted to do some curriculum flipping, and the parents of those students at MST are loving it. As a matter of fact, our sixth graders there the parents requested that both sixth grade classrooms do curriculum flipping. Now, it doesn't happen every day like it does at the high schools, but it happens once a week in some classrooms where the a teacher will create a video, post it, and then parents and students can sit down at night and go through that. And that really helps to engage the parent into their student's education. And it makes them feel like they're more confident in helping their student to learn. And for those of us that have these um, teenagers at the high schools, I know I was thrilled to know that there were videos available for BC Calculus and Pre-Cal because that is not something I'm going to be able to help myself with. So those kind of things help parents get that confidence level that they need. I would be remiss if I didn't talk a little bit about one of the real world connections we have that's unique to RSD, and I'm sure many of you who have been parents in Richardson will know about Enterprise City. Um, it is our um, jewel of a program that we have had, and I had the privilege of working in that program many years ago. Um, we teach financial literacy through that program for our elementary students, some of our junior highs, and then we also have a language immersion program where they go there and speak only the language that they're learning at that time in an economy type based program, so I wanted to bring that one up. And then the last piece that I wanted to share a little bit about was our online blended learning. Um, we're always looking for ways in RSD to deliver curriculum that will work for the students. And so because of scheduling and we have so many opportunities for our students in our classes, we want um, to expand that and offer some online courses that students can take for credit and do some blended learning models in the future as well. So students would see teachers um, maybe twice a week in the classroom and then do the rest of the material at home on their own the other three days. And so that gives them some opportunities and options. So we are always looking for ways to help our students 